Hi there. I know this is gonna sound crazy as hell, but I wanted to try something different than the norm when it came to um, do it yourself. Now, I don't have a lot of videos of items that I put together and things that I've built. I have a lot of pictures on Instagram and a lot of pictures on Facebook. So, one of the many things that I have done is restoring wood, restoring marble, renovations, uh, bathroom kitchens. I mean, if it has to do with construction, you name it. I'm a master carpenter, and um, one of the many skills that I have is working with uh, lumber, particularly big pieces of lumber, one by 12s, right? Just in case it's not one by 12, this is a one by 10, excuse me. Um, a lot of design aspects nowadays, some people are into like the heavy barn wood style of like shelving and tables and such. And looking at the prices that some of these items have for a piece of barn wood, um, just to do a shelf, you're looking at about close to the axis of like $200. Um, the shelving looks good because it's an aged piece of wood. It has many, many years. You know, it could actually become a conversation piece or it could just be a piece that looks rustic for your home for decor and stuff like that. I'm gonna show you how to age a normal piece of wood like this one right here with regular tools, regular items that you have in your house. I'm gonna pull my camera a little further from where I'm at and I'm gonna show you certain techniques that you could use to weather your lumber. And it's up to you once the stain sets in, uh, depends on the kind of stain that you have. So what I'm gonna be using as stain is, uh, is from the big box store. This one is ex Expresso, it's a wood stain. This is a water-based stain. You could put this on and wipe it off, leave it on, it's up to you. The more coats you put, the darker the lumber will look. And then I'm gonna coat it with a water-based polyurethane, same thing. You don't really need a lot of, if you're not doing this, um, where you're doing many of them or you want to get into your type of business to kind of sell this kind of shelving and stuff, you can do that. Um, I'm gonna make some of these things available. I'm just trying to get the gist of putting links and showing in videos. My videos are, straightforward the way they are um i still don't know how to edit them i still don't know how to add music add lettering none of that stuff so i'm still still learning regardless how many years i have to the channel but anyway we're going to age this by using different kind of tools good old hammer old flathead screwdriver old phillips head screwdriver and personal favorites nail and different bits in some cases if you have a witch chisel a witch chisel will, will work too I'm going to use an old railroad pin that I found which uh, in construction if you ever find something like this or one of those large penny nails from way before it's considered good luck I've had this thing in my toolbox now for about I want to say about 18 years and I intend to keep this longer in hopes that one day it becomes a conversational piece for my family when I'm no longer around. Anyway, I'm talking a lot of crap. Let's get started. So we're gonna start off by swinging a hammer on this piece. Everywhere you want, excuse the noise. a fork and two flip it around if you want do many different aspects do a couple of divots here and there do the other side If it's too loud, I apologize. Now, I don't know if you can tell, but if you look at the wood, it got little hammer marks and dicks and dents, almost looking like one of those old pieces of lumber that you will find. If it has cracks like this, don't worry. Keep those cracks. Trust me on that. Um, you can add more if you want. I'm going to add a lot more just for my liking.
And what you want to do is take your bit, take your drill, whether it's an impact or a regular drill or whatever. And you're going to just let the drill die. Try to get, put a little force here and there. some cases they do have a bit that you could attach to this that has um wiring on it and you could use that as well and just go with the drill that gives deep scratches on it um the ones that i gave are not as dense as that piece would do it but you get the idea we're starting to get a piece of wood that's a little bit more weathered off continue what you have drag that bit around against the grain, they have to reverse, just drag it. You don't have to put a lot of pressure on it, you could break the bit. And again, you could use different sizes of bits that you may want to use. Um, we're done with the bits, we're done with the hammer. We're saving the screwdriver, it's up to you if you want to use it or not. This will leave the indentation that there was some form of a screw in it somewhere here and there now for all of you safety guys out there that are saying why doesn't he have um safety glasses on it's because i'm stupid i've been doing this for now 36 years and i think if i wore safety glasses it would probably be on certain sites I should wear them more because I have a lot of scratches on my corneas. My wife goes crazy when I don't wear this kind of stuff and accidents have happened. I just never learned from it. <laughs> Luckily for me, yeah, no, it was stupid of me not to wear it, but let's continue. And again, this is now something that It's the need for it if you have the money to buy that this is just me showing you how to do something like this in case that you don't want to spend that kind of money and you want to have something in your home now you could do it with this kind of lumber you could do it with something different something wider um, up to you see how you get these little pieces here right. show you something else now the screwdriver I like to go in certain corners just to chip a little bit off of it again if you have a chisel that's even better this is what you want to do i want to try to break some little edges like that certain areas doesn't have to be all let's do the old pin um nail that i have and see let's make another big thing here Here's from that a nice big chunk out of it. Like that. This corner here. It's coming up. I don't want to do way too much on this. But um again, like I said, you could carry it. Dig some holes just like that.
and let's chip off a little bit on this corner here. This will be a lot easier, like I said, a chisel. But a chisel is gonna give you a more straight, smoother cut than what this would do, right? Again, let me go with a bigger drill bit here. And just for grins of the last time, a couple more dabs with that. And then if you have something cool, like I do, a little palm sander, just go to town on it. Not too heavy, lightly. I'm gonna move away because of the noise on this. And it would work if I had a battery attached to it. Using a 220 grit sandpaper for it, I didn't want to dig too much into the wood and make it too smooth. I wanted to still feel a little rough. So what I do is I take a little rag, moist rag, not crazy, not too too wet. And what I like to do is cold water popping when it comes to the wood. What happens is the embers takes the fibers of the wood and makes them come out, makes them more richer. And as you can see difference in the tone from this side to this side see right here where it divides this is where you want to be at some people go crazy with a spray bottle I don't a little weird on that one because I don't have a spray bottle. All right, almost there. So, if you're still looking at it, now you're starting to see what the lumber is looking like as far as the aging process. One of the last things that I want to do the nail you want to give a few divots as though nails were pulled out of this thing in the same pattern for all you carpenters that usually use nails two three holes you can do as many as you want in one line I like to do two at a time three at a time Lumber's cracking there. Usually if the lumber's cracking, you could do a, a bow tie link, cut a little hole in there. It's just too much to do right now. Sorry, I had to pause the video for a minute. I'm 
here. Listen to this. Hmm? Mm -hmm. I'm making a video. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Crystal. It's my friend Crystal was curious who I was speaking to. I'm going to show you guys how this looks in a minute. And yes, I could use the hammer to pull the nail out. I don't want that. I want to dig into the lumber so it could look like something was nailed there bigger than what I have. I'm not going to do anything on the sides, but here we are. So now that's that's there, it's clean, the water popping is everything is there. We're gonna come with our wood stain. And normally I use a regular rag. Today I just happen to have this little angle size brush that I'm gonna use to put it freely. I'm just gonna do one side for now. Show you guys how it would look. something like this so it doesn't matter how you do it just make sure those spots that you dug in you get stained in there really really good because that's what you want I'm gonna show you guys the effect in a few minutes once I finish doing this little staining here Now, you can do this with different stains. I just grabbed the first thing that I saw when I was at the store that I thought, you know, would have worked better. And so far, I'm getting the effect that I wanted to get. Now, I want to be 100% honest with you guys. This here would be my first time doing this. Again, I've done a lot of wood restoring and I've played with the thoughts of doing something like this. So this is not only a learning experience for you, but one for me as well. Before you know it, I might have a piece here that everybody's gonna be curious. You might be able to do yourself on the weekend when you're bored, pick it up as your hobby, whatever it is that you wanna do. I think that this for me is gonna be something that I'm gonna wanna do on a regular. Maybe I'll open up an Etsy page and put some stuff together. I do have things with raw iron that I wanna put up. I wanna show you guys how I did that as well. As long as many other things that I've done. I've built furniture. Um, hopefully you guys will subscribe and promote. Help me move the channel forward. Particularly those people that I have on Facebook that always say, I do amazing things with the projects that I've done and the work that I've done. Ah, this is looking better now. So again, I only did one side. And because it's water-based, I don't have to follow a certain specific pattern as once it dries, whatever streaks I have will soak into it. Not like regular polyurethane or regular oil stains that take a while and you know you have to like let it sit down for a while pass a rag on it right away this one is different i could pass a rag whenever i want 
or now if I want to. But let me show you what I got. What does that look like to you now? Hmm? Does it look like it's aged? Does it look like something that you might go and spend $200 for needlessly at a shop? Or do you think this is something that you could do yourself as a project on a weekend? Please share your thoughts. Leave some comments, um, any tips from you work, woodworkers and wood restorers out there that may know about this kind of stuff and what kind of lumber and wood we could use. I just use a piece of red Douglas fir that I found to do this project. From a leftover piece from a bigger project that I did, I paid 18 bucks for a 12, for eight foot piece of this lumber. This particular piece, this particular piece here, is 36 inches. So you could get two 36 pieces, one 24 inch piece if you want to do this as a decorative piece in your house, or you could add anything different. Here's the edging. Right? How's that looking to you? I'm gonna go ahead and turn this around. Um, I don't know if I should end the video now, if I should continue, but let's continue. Let's go all the way with this one and see what else. We could talk about while I'm doing this. So I've been doing carpentry now for 32 years. Um, picked it up from things that my grandfather used to do when he was younger, while he passed down to my pops and what I learned myself. Um, I learned to be very good at what I do, but I always found myself to be learning each and every day when it comes to this. Just like life, we always learn something new every day. Um, I'm a home inspector now, that's what I do for a living because my body and obviously from what you can tell in the video, my weight doesn't let me do much like I used to do. I'm not a spring chicken anymore. But this hopefully it's a hobby that I could pick up, something that I could do, something that I could share and something that I would just possibly be able to make ends meet on and develop another source of income for myself, for my family, and for our financial future when the time comes that I am no longer around to provide for them the life that I've been desperately trying to provide them. I wanna thank you for watching. I wanna thank you for your support. Please like, comment, and share the video if you feel this good enough to share and somebody might learn something from it and hopefully i get to see you guys another time thank you for watching peace